Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Let me put your sound up. Oh, can you? Okay. No, it's fine. Yes, it's all good. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. I can hear you. Good. Good. Where are you? I'm in. I'm in Campbell Hall. Okay. All right. How is how is that? How is it? Coming to see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And how long how long have you been there? Well, just I got here last night, so yeah. I'm I'm just here for the weekend and uh, just uh, looking after the dogs. And uh, Victoria's in Wisconsin visiting her. She has an aunt who's not very well now. Oh, having yeah. Yeah. Also, have a quilt exhibition. So, uh -huh. anyway, it's all good. And, yes. Uh, yeah, it's kind of nice. It's quiet, and yes. we can see some of the neighbors, but they seem to be fine. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, we um, know they are. But uh, and so, okay, from the, I mean, it seems to me very quick. But from when you found the house to close the house to moved in, it's, I mean, for me, it, that process was, I'm still traumatized by the process of buying a house. I, you know, um, well, I think I'm still, I think I'm still traumatized, but we did do it very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, um, because we wanted to get the East Hampton house on the market by yeah. The spring, right? So, no, because this is when you sell. This is. I, I hope. Hopefully, we'll see. They're yeah. they're they're making the they're photographing it and stuff now. So so we actually we have still have a substantial amount of furniture there and yes. and all the art. We just yeah. brought here what we kind of we need sure. the necessities of life to have a couple of beds and kitchen stuff. So. This very much feels like we're camping out, but mm -hmm. as far as um, travel, etc., it's um, wow! It's just very different from this because coming from the city, it only takes at most ninety minutes by car, yeah, and only slightly more by train. You come from Penn Station. Um, you change to Secaucus, you go to Secaucus in New Jersey, and then there's a train that comes right here. So, huh. yeah, uh, I mean, with it, there's a there's a there is a train station literally five minutes away. So, very nice. Oh, that's awesome. I yeah, I love that. That's, that's very good. Yeah. So yeah, how how was your week? How did it go? You look well. Uh, thank you. Yeah. No. So do you? I. It was my week went fine. I went to see a punk band last night who's been around since 1978, and they wow. they mentioned a couple of times we've been doing this for 45 years. This band, same members, and they they're still really? still rocking. Still, I mean, they can still. Yeah. No, I still had to wear earplugs. You know, I mean, they're still punk rocking. So. That's amazing, and they're still the same lineup. Same yeah, guy. And it, yeah, and it was uh, no, it was really nice because it was an all ages show. There were definitely parents with their kids. It was a very. I was actually talking to one guy just about how it was a very you know respectful mosh pit, and you don't, I don't know, you never know what to expect. But it's. it's <laughs> did uh, you did you ever think twenty five years ago that you'd be going to see this same band? Yes. Yes, were, I did. No, I did. And I, 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 you know, and for me, so I, I mean, so I, I can never quite claim first wave punk when punk was being born. I was being born, but I was listening to disco by the eighties. I was already listening to darker music, new wave, punk metal. Um, and already by, and so already by the nineties, this is when like Green Day is coming and when punk was really sort of becoming mainstream and yeah. I could wear my dog collar at the, at my restaurant job because people it just yeah. wear my pink hair without teachers saying yeah. anything. Um, yeah. By then, some of those bands from the seventies had already been around for 20 years and I pictured they'll still be around, I assumed. And I, you know, people would say, what are you going to do when you, what are you going to do with those tattoos when you're 50? And I said, be 50 with tattoos. I don't, you know, I don't, what am I going to do? Yeah. Well, just, yeah, there are plenty of grannies with tattoos. Are, now. I, it's, and it's very interesting. Well, again, part of going to a show like that is 
different types of shows attract different people. And this one being an older act, I, I was very nostalgic for some of the punk bands that you saw. But also it's interesting that different eras have different styles of tattoo. You say, like, I, oh. yeah, I don't, you know? Um, and so I think younger kids you, are- You think that ha if that has to do with fashion, taste, uh, degree of skill, or the, what, the, 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 the more, we well, have some pretty skillful ones, actually. So I, I do know. Okay, so I think as far as like pushing the lines of realism and certain kinds of illusions, like this. I mean, this is the same thing as video games, same things as movies. Certain things like fog effects, water effects. I mean, the same things as, as painting. Um, people trying to capture that as as either realistically or as as um, impressionistically as possible. You know, to give their own spin on it, their own. Um, yeah. And then the other things I think people, okay, as far as technology, ink has come a long way. And so you see much, much, much oh. more vibrant and a full range of colors versus, I mean, even my era was sort of the tail end of very traditional Sailor Jerry, you know, certain, you know, red, green, blue, you knew, yeah. you knew yeah. the colors of a tattoo. And now it's, you know, everything goes, um, but also this, I mean, not to, I think younger generations choose different styles so that they're, it, it doesn't look too much like older styles. I mean, it is funny that, you know, 90s tribal very much dates you to a certain, a certain era, I think, but yeah, so currently they like a lot more fine line now, they like smaller tattoos, a lot more quirky stuff, funny stuff, whereas my era was still kind of the tough tattoos. I mean, I still have like swords and, you know, I mean, I, I, and yeah. I'm not a tough guy, but that's still, you know, spider webs. That's still what that that's what we did. But now they're much more likely to have a Disney character or a, and that's great. I think, you know, it's. Yeah, it's a come a long way from mom. And, uh, <laughs> but right? those, and, but the but that style is still around and people very much still yeah. appreciate traditional. And that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you ever think uh, you're, you think you're going to get one? No, I <laughs> I, I don't actually. Um, uh, no, I don't think so. It's too late. Um, it's not. I but I, well, I, I know late. I might. I don't know. I think. I think if I did, it would be. It would be some dots for a constellation hmm. mm -hmm. um there was one boy at the school i was at who had and i don't know in those days he must have done it himself mm -hmm. he had he had a triangle he had just he just had three dots mm -hmm. on his wrist but they were very <laughs> they were very effective because no one had no one and no one except sailors had tattoos. Were they were they in a triangle pattern? They were they're not not in a perfect triangle. So okay. there was there was a, a there was a sense of deliberation deliberateness. Uh -huh. Well, you no, because I mean? three dots typically means it it has a meaning, and I I it has well, a I don't know if it had a meaning in yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Weybridge in 1958. I don't. Yeah, I I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't say. I, I did. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I told you, but I I've finally, I finally um, came to a a semi satisfactory conclusion. There is an image I wanted in my book, yes. which is a photograph of the track team that I was on. Huh. I was 15, yeah. right? Yes. So yes. It's a standard school photograph. Yes. Of I don't know, maybe maybe 12 guys standing and sitting, yes. you know, looking at the camera in right. in our in our track uh, in our shorts and and yes, shirts, right? I mean, it's just like these photographs every school takes them, right? And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I'm sitting next to, I mean, happened at the time, Mike O'Farrell, who became, who was a close friend at the time, stayed in touch with, ended up in Australia at Perth. He was a curator. We lost contact for 35 or 40 years. We met up with ourselves at the end of our, in other words, he was, and he and I were kind of the two guys at our school 
who did the quote unquote outrageous things like yes. we put on yeah, yeah. Samuel Beckett play, we went to demonstrations, yes. Yes. you know. And so I wanted him and me together. And the, in the context of this photograph, right? Yes. Also is shows the times, right? Yes. So, so my publisher said, my German publisher said, you have to get permission from everybody in the photograph. Right. I said, well, you realize all of these, all of these boys, if they're alive, are now almost 79 years old, like me, because we're all <laughs> right. the same age, right? Yes. I I have no, I, I know that my friend died. Right. So I can get permission from his widow. Sure. Which I did because we're still friends. Yes. I said, but there's no way that even if any of these other people, those that are still alive, and I would right. guess maybe half of them are, I don't know, I have no right. idea. I said, I don't know how they're going to be upset. I don't know how they're going to find the book, read the book, and then sue me. I mean, what, you know. Yeah. So we went backwards and forwards. In the United States, you don't have to get permission from... Uh -huh on celebrity living person yes, yes. who's inside a book. If you put them on the cover, yes. Sure, okay. But if they're inside, you don't. Right. Okay. In Europe, because of yes. some Euro law in 2018, relatively, sure. now you do, right? Because they have all kinds of privacy laws we don't have here. We Americans- They have lots of privacy laws, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, well, you well, know- Well, no, that. we Americans don't even care anymore. We we don't read the terms of service. We've get, we have completely, and I talk about this a lot, we've completely, and, I, and when I say we, I mean myself as well, for convenience, for speed, for- you know, free, if I, well, free, if, you know, if any product is free, then you're the product, all the, all those apps, they're, they're collecting all kinds of data that they're not allowed to in Europe. And we just, we don't even really think about it or know anymore, but I, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. That wasn't the, yeah, but so no, okay. So where, so where are you now with the, so, so I, I, so the publishers, the, my editor's idea was to blur all the other faces. Okay. I said, I said that's what you do with criminals, right? Right. That, right. That, or 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 children of celebrities, you right. know. Yeah. You, and and the Mark, the guy who's who designed all my books and designing this book, who's yes. I really, I've never, I've never crossed him on anything. I, I everything he's done, I've been really enthusiastic. He and he's been designing these kinds. I mean, books for twenty five years. He said, it's ridiculous. I've never heard of this. I've never done uh, it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he realized it was a European law. So mm. I said, I actually, I just took the, I took a copy of the image and I put a circle around Mike and me. Okay. Uh -huh. Like, and he's yes. done a very good job because he made it an oval photograph. Yes. You, you can see the bits of the of, other boys. With arms, but you can't. So yeah. you can see what it, what, what it, where it's from. Yes. You can't see all their faces. Yeah. But I mean, this is my week, right? I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. supposed to be getting, yeah, the, you know, anyway. Okay. But very good news. I got a, I don't know. Nobody's read this book yet except me and the editor, I swear to God, Sotheby's wants to exert it in a magazine for November huh. or September. Uh, I mean, it's on Amazon so they can see the cover, right? Yes. Oh, is it? Oh. I yeah, didn't... it's listed for September, Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's all anybody knows. So yes. So they're taking a huge risk, actually, by... by... <laughs> Especially Sotheby's, but anyway. Well, so. no, I, they, it's you. Well, I, it's you. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, right. Okay. No. Okay. That made well. Well, that made me several think of several things. I do want to talk about demonstrations. You mentioned demonstrations, but okay. So, pa is it Paramount? It is Paramount who made Top Gun Two, which you saw and you enjoyed. Um, I think. Yeah, I mean, those are that. It's like, uh, it's like candy. I mean, it's like. Oh, for sure. Okay, yeah. two lawsuits associated with it. 
One was an actor who was in the original Top Gun. This is why this is so specific to what you just the story you just told. He was in the original Top Gun. In Top Gun Two, there is a scene where someone is looking at a group photograph of the original of the original. Yes, I get it. I get group it. Group of Top Guns. It actually zeroes in on Val Kilmer and Tom Cruise, of course, because they're. Yes. But I remember this, it. I remember this it guy was in that picture and he sued Paramount for using his light. He wanted a piece of Top Gun 2 because he was an actor who was sent. I don't think he even had a speaking part in Top Gun 1. I think he was essentially an extra who was paid his $500 for the day to dress up in a military uniform, stand in the background of this group shot that has maybe, you know, whatever, 30 people in it. And he wants to get paid. I, I don't know. What's your what do you think? Well, I, I think that he signed a release which is exact well because he, he signed a release now now the original i don't know that release that release might have been faulty it i mean may... i don't know what the, i mean I, I i it i i i am still on the side of the studio i think they created the original scenario they paid everyone for it it is their property they've used it the way they've wanted to use it for 30 years it runs on television they've created different videos of it so excising a moment of it to use in the sequel, which is also their property, to me, it's, I mean, again, I'm not pro-corporate, I'm not pro-studio. Well, I, I think it's a no-brainer. I think that's a, I think that's, it's a very, very, it's a, it's a distressing reflection on how poorly that person's career has gone. That, that, that was, that was their one moment, their brief, a flicker of moment. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Now hanging, they've been waiting 20 years, I guess. <laughs> okay. Two other lawsuits who were semi-related. Hey, no, let me lawsuit. just finish. What? Can you imagine, just imagine him going to see that movie. He's already upset uh, because he was in the original one. Yes. And then this comes on the screen. He probably leapt up in the theater. <laughs> he probably stood uh, up in his seat and yeah. went haywire, right? Yeah. Okay, no, I mean, yeah, okay, I mean, it's sympathy for, yeah. Um, okay, well, okay, the next lawsuit is the guy who wrote the magazine article upon the original, of which was called Top Gun, that the original film was based on. He is credited in the original film as inspired by, but gets no credit or money at all from the sequel. What do you think? Well, again, I think that... Um, there was a document that he signed. Yeah. And I do believe that the, I don't know if the first Top Gun people deliberately wrote that document in such a way that they could make a sequel and exclude him. Sure. I kind of, I doubt that. I mean, right. I don't kind of doubt that. Right. Um, I think that uh, I I think that he should have. Okay, this is very interesting because I'm going to talk about a very similar situation. Yeah, um, he should have had a better lawyer. Yeah. Okay, so the sculptor Richard Serra died mm -hmm. last week, and and he did this big sculpture called Tilted Arc, yeah. which was put in the Federal Plaza in a in the General Services Administration building downtown below Canal Street. Right. It was a commission piece. Yes. And this is like in 19 late 1970s. And um there was a there was a stink about it. The public idea is people didn't like it. And it was removed, right? Mm -hmm. It was it was in fact removed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So because he died, somebody resurrected this. It was a big, big deal at the time. Sure. And they wrote an article about it. Sure. Okay. Which was which was which was a, a perfectly okay article. It was by a young woman. It was based on what she could find out from mm -hmm. what happened at the time. I was actually very involved because I was on a panel of five people and we ha heard hearings for two days 
organized by the General Services Administration mm -hmm. of people who were pro it and con it. There were public hearings. Mm -hmm. And so I was put on this because I knew the wife of the guy who was head of the GSA. I knew from the beginning that they were going to win and be able to remove it yeah. because because three of the people on the panel were from the GSA. Yes. And one was a one was a, a, a collector whom I knew, and the other was me. And I thought, well, it's going to be three against two. This was even before right. even before the hearings. Okay. Right. So the hearings are very interesting because Richard Serra in the hearings took the position that the piece was site specific. In other words, even though there was this big piece of steel in the plaza, the steel wasn't wasn't the work. The steel only wasn't the work. Mm -hmm. the, the work was the steel and its and its place where it is. Yes. So he said, if you take the steel away, you're not removing a sculpture. You're destroying a piece, right? Yes. Yeah. Which is which which. Nowadays, there's a lot of site-specific work, and right. he's done a lot of sites. So that all sounded very good. Unfortunately, if you want unwound it, as happened at these hearings, there were no big art lawyers. There were no clever art lawyers in those days. And the one art lawyer that he had that anybody could have, he was a good guy. He was a hippie guy. All he did was defend artists against, you know, um, stuff like this yes, yeah. human human rights and the contract originally written clearly allowed the government to take this away if they wanted to right. okay right and richard sarah's site specific argument i believe came after the fact in right. other words yeah it, it so um so i guess where i'm going with this is that and i i i mean no what the unfortunate thing was after two days of hearings we went into a room voted in one minute and it was four to one i was the only person who said it should be kept so instead of being three to two i thought at least the <laughs> elective would be on my you part. thought you had at least one hour oh. no i did yeah that so was four to one so right. so but there are there's obviously if if <laughs> i don't know um this is something i really feel very strongly about having spent huge sums of money on lawyers fairly recently <laughs> yeah i mean huge sums of money that it's very unfortunate that we need so much legal protection but it's it's a fact it seems to be a fact of life because we live in this country and in a highly litigious society. Yes. And I'm talking about, this goes for people as well as corporations, as well as yep. you, know, you step on my toe, I'm gonna sue you, yep. you know? Right. Um, yep. you're, 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 poisoning the, you're poisoning the climate, yes, I'll sue you. Well, that, that's good, okay? If I can sue the, uh, you know, um, uh, Clorox or whatever. Right. But on the other hand, it also means that there's a huge amount of fr frivolous, um, yeah, and and unfortunately, the law doesn't allow a frivolous plaintiff to have to pay a defendant's legal fee. It, it does. Well, it does. Well, it's not always, but it can. It's not. It, it's not a slam dunk. In no. in, in in Europe, it's a, it's like you you can. You can actually it can cost you a huge amount of money to take a to take a frivolous action. Right. Here, uh, yeah. It, it, it's I, you have to pay your legal. I mean, most of the time you have to unless it's unless you have a very good lawyer. Right. No, but you have a very good lawyer. That lawyer is going to charge a lot. So whether, <laughs> I think. Well, you might get the other person to pay them, but that, no, that brings me to the third story. So the second, story, I was more sympathetic of the writer, though I agree with you. Ultimately, I think you're right. I mean, you have to you it, you were beholden to the contract you signed, and if you didn't have the foresight to think 
uh, you know, someone else did or someone's language, you know. But, okay, the third case, this is over a fan who sued Universal because they watched a trailer to a movie called Tomorrow. In the movie, in the trailer, I'm sorry, there is a, sh a scene with the actress Anna de Armas that does not appear in the movie. This is fairly common. Trailers are often made while the film is still in production and often contains scenes that are not in the movie. It's it's a, it's kind of a longstanding standard that they're an example but not illustrative of the final product. Um, sometimes there's even wording in the in the trailer that says that. Um, yeah. Fans have created whole fan fiction around scenes that appeared in trailers that didn't appear in the movie because they wanted that. That was the movie they wanted to see. And, and that's kind of all fun and whatnot. But this person sued Universal. Um, they tried to make it class action status. Universal's argument was, this movie wasn't even that successful. Go ahead and try and make it class action. It never went class action, but they had to defend it. They ended up counter suing the, this, this person. The person sued for $3.99 the rental of the movie. Universal countersued them for hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees and won, but they ended up settling it. So, I, yeah, I, I think <laughs> I think probably going after a little guy for hundreds of thousands of dollars is not a good look, but Universal proved that you can do it in this, proved that that because that it was so oh. basically frivolous. I mean, it was so they, they couldn't. I mean, there's no damages. There's you. OK, you what you watched a movie that you were hoping someone was in the movie ends. They weren't in it. You were disappointed, but there's no damages. Um, no, I, I, they they obviously thought beyond the three ninety nine. They thought, actually, this is an opportunity, even if it costs them some money. To close the door on this, right? For future, future, you know, um, I, 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 that's kind of clever. I would have never thought to sue um, <laughs> because I, because actually, you you learn not really to trust trailers, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. No. I, I mean, yeah. The, because the sometimes number... they look, they, yeah. they, you want to see the movie, and you're deeply disappointed. You know, so, not 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 a, not just that th this bit wasn't in the movie, but these were the only interesting bits in the movie. That, that's the only, most right. That's the only most two common. Minutes of, right. That's but, the most common one. It's not that it wasn't in the movie. It's that that was the movie, or that was <laughs> yeah. No, and that's actually that's what's happening with the. I think it's the current number one movie in America right now. It's called Civil War. And they're promoting it like it's a action war movie, but it's actually mostly just journalists talking about civil oh. rights, which is, which is fine, which is great. But uh, yeah, I actually I only just heard about it yes. the other day, and I didn't know anything. I was very deeply skeptical. Mm -hmm. or, why? So yeah, I'm uh, yeah. I, I'm I, into I, that. I, I don't like the timing. It's not something I'm in the mood for. I but the, I actually really trust the director and the writer director. So I'm I'm mildly curious, but I'm not going to see it in the theater. When it's available, I'll I will see it. Um, any other, oh okay, all right. Well, since we're, I guess the theme is lawsuits, fans suing Madonna for showing up late to her own concerts, which she has notoriously done for years. Like if a standard concert starts at eight or nine maybe the headliner comes on madonna doesn't come on until 10 or 11. um this happens to be a super fan who says i've been to every tour since 1985 but who now sues in 2019 to say it was a weeknight and i i i i i i you know i was a little bit tired for work um well i i mean we we used to go to we, I mean, we'd go, and this is actually the end. This is the end of my book. Um, your mother and I would go to Studio Fifty Four, New Year's Eve, to see um, um, she sang French songs um, and Le, uh, she was an iconic black singer. Um, La Vie en Rose. Uh, she was a disco singer. I know who you're talking about. I'm not, okay. It's not just you. Okay. I, I, yeah. Okay. Okay. She was. She would be three hours late, right? Yes. Well, it's <laughs> it's studio. Two to three hours late. Yes. So midnight was at three a.m. Right. I mean, <laughs> the, the, nobody. Gave, I mean, you knew yeah. that. So you yeah. didn't get dressed until midnight. Right. 
to see her. Grace Jones. Grace Jones. Oh, great. yes. No. <laughs> well, wow. Grace Jones. Madonna is nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Grace Jones is three hours late, right? But, no. So, <laughs> so she's probably of... in New Jersey at midnight. She wasn't even, <laughs> you know, anywhere near the, the place. But no, speak, okay, speaking of you didn't get dressed until I've actually shown up too late because I assumed the band. I'm like, are you kidding? You you played on time? Like, I, you know, because I, I <laughs> well, didn't. Well, yes, you could sue them for playing on time, <laughs> right? But yeah, no, so that, yes, of course, predictably that also got thrown out because, uh, yeah, no, because they said, well, if you, if you are a super fan, then you should have known that this is, this is predictable. Uh, she makes jokes about it during her set. This is, it's not. Yeah, I mean, the point is, this is the performance, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, but by that, at that point, if it's, you know, if it's, if it, if she's always this, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. Right? It's one thing you could say, she's always on time and I paid the babysitter $12 an hour and I had to pay, you know, I don't, I don't. But, Again, yeah, no, yeah. Um, okay, uh, it was. What's your T-shirt? Let me see your T-shirt. Oh, it says it says Tay Swift, and but it's the Danzig logo. She has her album. Yeah, which logo? Danzig, the metal band Danzig. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, I, well, yeah. I, she is. I mean, so she's doing stuff. She has music out. I'm, 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 I'm. I'm what, what do we think about um, uh, m m the McCartney Lennon? Oh, yes. Oh, Sean. Yes. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Have you heard it? I, I did. Don't... I listened to it. It's, it is not, it is very, well, what is interesting is it is very, and I know, well, Sean has been part of the Elephant Memory Band for, he's the band leader of Elephant Memory Band for, well, they're not touring anymore, but during the last phase of his mother's career before she retired. Um, so, but more making sort of. Wait, dance say that before she was. His mother's career before she was she reti what? retired. Oh, retired. Yeah, I thought you said fired. No, no, no. <laughs> no, she's no. But I mean, she's well. She's where you are. She's in the Hudson Valley now, and just kind of. I think she's living. Yeah, oh. Yoko. Yeah. Okay. But she was she was touring through. I mean, just a few years ago, and he was touring as her band leader, and but okay. making more like again what she makes, which is electronic dance, ambient, experimental. Yeah, sound yeah. loops the stuff she's been doing for you know 70 years um this is very singer songwriter so it's definitely more like uh the uh, mccartney's son's style it's on his album it but it's not trying to be the beatles it's uh, yeah i really like it i i liked it no it's not beatles or people are saying it is because it's 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 men harmonizing in a guitar but it's i i don't think it is i mean it's I I, 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 no, okay. I think it's valid to call it Beatlesque, but I don't think it's trying. I think it's deliberately not trying to be, knowing that it's going to be compared no matter what it is. Okay. So what can you do? Um, there was an interesting quote from, what what is Ringo's son's name? Uh, well, I don't know. If, if it's not Bingo, I'm mad. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> no, because he's in the music business too. I, I don't know. Okay. They, somebody said to him, oh. what do you think of this criticism? And he said, the Beatles is a wall. You can't go through, you can't, you can't go around. In other yeah. words, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. it's, if you're a kid, if you're a Beatles kid, yeah. you do, you have to do what you want to do. And someone is always going to say that's like the Beatles, right? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, no, well, I admire them for doing that. That's interesting, actually. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I, and I think it's just it's just kind of nice. I think it's something we need, like, oh, yeah, Lennon McCartney rides again, come together. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, okay, I, I need to ask, because I, I, it keeps coming into my head, your artwork in the yard in East Hampton, that's just going to stay in situ. Speaking of... Well, that's a very, that's a, yeah. Um, it, it's not going, I mean, look, if... <laughs> It's unlikely that the people who buy the house will want it, okay? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So if by some bizarre reason they do, I might just leave it there, okay? Mm -hmm. But 
it it can come it's not cemented into the ground i know yeah 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 so i i mean i i i i talked to the guy who helped me put it in cuz i don't remember right it, it can come out it can come here and it can go here, here somewhere i i would like it to stay in the family it's special to me oh what well, no it okay then i mean yeah, yeah I, I make the you know make please make that and i would remind you i tried to commission a companion piece for here or something like a keep whatever you're if you have an idea oh and i'd also i'm sorry we, I know we only have a couple more minutes. Um, in the next week, if you would like, to, I, we talked about National Poetry Month. I, I am doing a poetry zine. Um, if you would like to, if, if, it, if it inspires you, and if you have an idea, and you've, or if you have a poem you want to submit. Oh, sure. Great, yeah, but, I'll give you a poem. But you don't you have to. You a poem next week? Uh, yeah, week? if you can, if you can. Um, it's going to be online, an online? It, no, it's, well, it's going to be both. It's going to be print, but it's going to be, it's, uh, yeah. I'll it's definitely gonna, give you one. Don't yeah. worry. No, it's going to be a physical, physical zine. That's um, fine. I, I've been flattered yeah. to be asked. I've had two poems published in the last 15 years. I, well, okay. Well, one of, our, one of them was here. Yeah. And the other one was a magazine called Cloud Bank. Do you have that? Oh, yeah. I have that one too, but it's, I don't have that one. I do have, I have some of Amy's poems here. Okay. Yeah. yeah good. All right. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, I'll send you a poem. No problem. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for asking. No, I, of course, no. And I, yeah, and again, and and, yeah, I, I, I okay. Um, did it, do we talk about taxes? It was taxes. Anything interesting? I know you work for. Well, you don't work for the IRA, but you you work with. Anything? No, that has no impact on our. <laughs> no, I know <laughs> what, we, what we do. I mean, what the art panel does, which I can't talk about. But right, but. It, Nothing to do. It does. It the the calendar doesn't affect the, the tax calendar. Doesn't. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, um. Uh. No. Except except that I think. I think that the man who's on trial in Manhattan right now, with a jury pick, should also be on trial because he doesn't pay his taxes. But that's yeah. just. <laughs> well you, yeah no i mean i think somebody I, set themselves on fire i i the, okay my only yes my own and they have it had nothing to do i mean i don't think it had anything to do with trump it but it was because a lot of people were gathered there maybe and, i what i find i guess disturbing about how that was covered and not just how people are talking about it as individuals but media it felt almost like people were reserving judgment like well, it depending on whose side is on, maybe this was this was. There's no way this was a logical act or a huge. Uh, I mean, no, it had nothing to do with it. Yeah, but but people. The, I guess the biggest thing was everyone wanted it to be one side or the other. And, oh, okay. And, you know the narratives, and that's just it's just to me it was just how divisive our society is. Yeah. In other yeah. words, we wanted to claim it or disclaim it or disclaim it, and yeah, no, yeah. exactly, and it, but it's. Or blame it, or yeah. Yeah, and the guy was the guy had serious mental issues, and which is right. terrible. Right. Yeah. No. Terrible. Um. So okay. So but no. So this was not um, a political protest, but people have done that. No, it wasn't. Time. It wasn't at all. Yes. Was. Um. I was just thinking. You had mentioned uh, protesting back in the day. Do you want to tell? I, I. So Earth Day is on Monday. My first experience with sort of any kind of political action was organizing this huge event. All of the city comes out. It was very, very empowering. I'm given a t-shirt. Yeah. It says volunteer on the back. Yeah, and, I remember. Then and then immediately I'm given a garbage bag and I realize it's Earth Day. It's a million people. And to this day, it is still the single largest gathering of any Earth event, including the original in 1970. 1990 Earth Day is the biggest Earth Day in New York. It was a million people in Central Park in one day. But they're all just tossing, they're not even tossing it in the garbage, just at the garbage. We spent all day just cleaning up garbage. And it was, so it was both an amazing, empowering experience. We made this happen. We can do this. Just me and a group of people in a room can divide. I didn't we divide. Can make it. A I didn't invite huge them. mess, right? We can <laughs> and all, and it, and, but also, do all these people legitimately care about the earth or did they just come to hear the B 52s, which is, well, that was before recycling, right? I mean, I mean, well, no, you're right because New York was the pilot. I mean, the blue bins 
We, yeah. we were the first at 61 West 62nd. That, I remember when that blue bin, and I'm like, what is this for? And it, yeah. yeah, they didn't exist before that. And now it's national and everyone does it. But it, yeah, no, that recycling didn't exist then. Very good. I like that. Yeah. But no, tell me, I mean, and I know, you know, uh, citizens, CND, Citizens for Nuclear Disarmament and. Committee of 100. Mm. Is called Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about your days, or if you don't, if you're, if you don't have to, I mean, it's. Whatever. Well, I. Um, the big thing, the big thing you did every year was you marched from Aldermaston, which was a uh, uh, miles outside London, where there was a big nuclear uh, plant. Yeah. You marched from Aldermaston to Trafalgar Square, and it was two nights. Uh, it it took. Two days and two nights, which you spent in tents. Yes. Right? So it was like a real pilgrimage. I mean, it was yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a long it was a march. It was quite a long march. And then you get to Trafalgar Square, and you had people like um, Bertrand Russell, mm -hmm. and you celeb you know celebrities, philosophers, mm -hmm. whatever, and and you'd have a rat and you'd have a rally. Now the for for uh, a teenager who goes to an old boys school, the opportunity to spend two nights, two days and nights on the road in the company of young women who are also on your team as protesting. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So so I started off, I started off under the banner of the West Chertsey Young Liberals, which mm -hmm. is, you could say, medium left in mm -hmm. the politics mm -hmm. of that time. Yes. I ended up under the banner of the West Hampstead Young Communist League, <laughs> you'd say was the far left. Yes. Which perhaps had more to do with the daughter of the guy that ran the West Hampstead Young Communist League than it did necessarily with my belief in communism, right? Yes. Yeah, no, yes. It was a combination of of feelings about <laughs> both um, society, the world is coming to an end, and young women. So yes, yeah. So, but kind of was a neat package at the time. Well, I mean, well, I mean, I think when they talk about the like. Yeah, no, I, I won't go there. Um, no, I can't. I mean, you know, there's. Yeah, that, no, those I'm were also... benign. Those were relatively benign experiences, as opposed to when I was picked up by the police for the anti-apartheid, mm. and I was, um, I was beaten, but like everybody was. I mean, we we're all beaten by the police, so that was yeah. That that was shocking to me because you one didn't believe the British police did that, right? Right. It, it wasn't. It, I mean, it was. It, and and people didn't believe me. I mean, right. Because right. They, no, they, they still right. How, yes, they, they didn't do it in sight of. Of course, they, no. Of course, they knew. They knew how to get you to exit the place, which everybody had to do sooner or later to either get food or go to the lavatory or something, right? right. And they made you exit down a, down an alley where they had all their patrol cars. Do you know that this is, there is a, this is called bottlenecking. And it yeah, is, yeah, they, it, it I, is, yeah. They do I don't know purpose. whether they invented it, but I was 16 at the yeah, time. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, they teach it in police academy now. So oh, no, this, they yeah. This they, is, they, they they let you go halfway down the street and then they just picked you up and threw you into the van. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, I they didn't uh, they I I I was injured not by them punching me but because there was I was thrown into an empty van which had m metal shell. I mean, you sat on metal uh, seats. The seats were just uh, you know. So they threw me and I hit my head on the seat, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'll make as much of it as I can. Okay. You know? Speaking of, of lawsuits that are not frivolous, someone is currently suing a, a law, a police department somewhere for quote unquote, what it, they're called rough rides there. It's, you know, we're just gonna, you know, not buckle you in and then take you for a rough ride. And, and that's, I've broken a finger on one. I mean, you know, that, that it's what police do and I mean, yeah, they, they take you down the bumpiest street they can find and that, you know, and it's, but someone oh. coming over that. So, I mean, that's, that's a good thing. Um, do we want, um, and I, yeah, the, anything about the protest in colleges and the crackdown and I, mean, oh, I, I, I just think it's getting to it now getting to a point of being ridiculous when some, I mean, I just saw, I didn't really read the article, but there's some, somebody at, like USC. Okay, can I say can I say something though? And I'm gonna yeah. play devil's advocate because I you know me. Um yeah, I've been following that story. She was the valedictorian, she is a 3.8. She she's yeah. Here's the thing though. She has a post on her it's on her Instagram and she her her no, I don't want to say excuse, but she says it's from years ago, but it's a it's just a link. But if you go to that link, it calls for a one state Palestine and the erasure of the state of Israel. Okay. And she won't apologize for that. All right. So, so, so I didn't know that. No, right. No. So I, I but, okay. But and then, here's the thing on Columbia campus, people are setting up tents, wearing face masks and refusing to identify themselves. So c campus police and who not, and again, I am not on the side of, campus columbia is using eminent domain to kick people of color out of their home like i'm not on the side of organizations yeah, yeah. but they can't identify who's even a real student who's a people again people are wearing like ski masks yeah. and and setting up tents and setting up and i so one of the things and i i, I see this both ways um, on one hand, they're saying they won't even meet with us we're trying to meet with the protesters but i also know because the white house is experiences the same thing we won't meet with you because you know what the demands are. The demands are ceasefire. The demands are not supporting that. You know, it's, it, I, it, it, to me, this is all very complex. This is all very nuanced. I don't talk about it a lot on the internet because I don't want any of my words to be taken out of context. But yeah, I do think it's interesting that I am very much on the side of free speech, but some of what these students are doing, I, I, no, I, I, I entirely agree with you. What I don't agree with is a, any university using security as a reason. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no. oh, okay. No, that was my, that's yes. They, they, they host, were... they house presidents and, and they can provide security. Yes, for I, I, uh, yes, I absolutely. So, so use if you if you're going to bat, if you're going to say this shouldn't happen, you should be you should be brave enough to give your reasons. Mm -hmm. In other words, not mm -hmm. to use that as an excuse because that's again that's we know that's not true. In other words, or it's true-ish. Well, but I, I mean, well, no, I well, okay, that's where I where I latched onto this story, which was. You, oh no, you gave into bullying yet again, which is, I mean, Target has done this with, they removed pride materials because bullies, oh, well, we can't keep our employees safe. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah we discussed this. But yeah. yeah, no, but then they're willing to hire extra security to protect Stanley Cup. So yes, I, I, you know, any company that lets, or any organization that lets bullying, you're letting bullying win. Um, and so that's where I started with this. And I do agree that, that, oh no, this, it, it was too much of a security risk. And that, yeah, no, the full nuanced story is they won't even specify who made the risk, what the risk is. They won't even say, yeah. And they never reported it to the police, the, 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 whatever, not LA police, right, PD, right. but they, there is no crime, uh, there, no crime was ever reported. So if they ha even, if they were, if, if security was, like you said, um, if security was the issue, they, they could have handled it in a different way. They're using this as a cover for something else. But I don't think they knew about her Instagram post. I think... No, probably not. I but, mean, I, that's fair enough. But. And I think the people who uncovered it are probably not people who I would like or identify with. I think these people who saw a, a hijab-wearing woman and then dug into her history to find 
a thing to be mad about. So it's, again, yeah. it's all incredibly nuanced. But when she was called out on this specific link, she said, I, but maybe that's it. Maybe her, I'm not going to be called out on a link, something I linked to three years ago that I, I don't, I, I'm, I've, I, I've linked to lots of things. I'm, I, if someone came at me and said, do you stand by everything on this entire website? I would not apologize for everything on their website. I mean, I, I, it's incredibly nuanced, but the headlines don't tell nuance. And most people don't, re and yeah, no, I, yeah. Mm. I mean, I guess that's sure. what the thing is that, I mean, what, what, when we're talking about, it's not October 7th, it's not 1967. It's not, I mean, it's, we're talking about history. We're talking about e e eons. I mean, I mean, people have lived in this region for a long time, very complex, very nuanced. And the headlines are just very, very, well, they're black and white, they're headlines. The black so. and white. No, it is, it is, it, yeah. And I mean, yeah. We, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, but we need something else to end on. Yeah. Uh, do come here and comfort me. I love you. What, uh, I your love dogs? You, are, are your dogs with you? They're, they're, I've got to go take care of them now. Yeah. 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 Okay. I love Bye. you and have Don't a good week. I'll send you a poem. Okay. Yes, please send me a poem. Okay. Bye. Bye.